Welcome everybody. Part of Relationships Radio Show is copyrighted. No one is to use any part of the show without express written consent from myself, Greg Dzinski, or the Art of Relationships. Thank you. Welcome to the Art of Relationships Radio Show. Greg welcomes live calls from listeners in helping with numerous marital and relationship problems. There will be no more tit-for-tat arguments. Greg gets to the root of couples' challenges in a rapid, matter-of-fact format plus applies compassion and humor join in discovering how to improve your relationship and your own life listen laugh and climax greg is a licensed professional counselor in the state of michigan to others he's simply known as detroit's love guru (laughs) hey welcome everybody this is your host greg tazinski licensed professional counselor here in the state of michigan relationship and sex specialist oh baby and this is the art of relationships radio show welcome everybody and it feels so good that the tech issues are resolved Woo-hoo! which is good last week's show ran real smooth and this show should too so welcome everybody to those just um viewing the show for the first time a huge huge uh welcome and much appreciated you know, appreciation for you showing up. And, you know, part of the show is I'm very down to earth, very real, very genuine. And I don't use a lot of psychobabble, as a lot of people following me know. Um, I want to help individuals get at the root of the issues uh, so they can resolve them as soon as possible. And the big issue with a lot of couples, I would say, you know, even individuals, that a lot of times the anger covers up the hurt. So, my primary focus, maybe the first session, whatever, I'm going to dig deep down underneath that anger and allow people to feel safe enough to pull that hurt out. Once you realize that your partner, you know, significant other is coming to you from hurt, you know, it makes defenses go down a little bit. And hopefully, not always, hopefully there'll be compassion and empathy for that. And you're going to be able to check yourself and look at, you know what? What the hell am I doing to cause the hurt, the pain, maybe even the anger, unless you're arrogant, then let's face it, you're not going to be able to check yourself, right? Because everything you do is perfect, right? That was sarcastic, people, okay? Welcome. Tonight, we should have a lot of fun, so you can give me a call, as always, at 313-614-9498. Again, 313-614-9498, and it is at the top of the video, right above the live button, the red live button on Facebook, um, along with my website, theartofrelationships.org. And as always, you can answer any questions you want, um, any questions at all you want regarding relationships, sexual dynamics, or maybe even grief and loss and maybe you know, PTSD or trauma that you've been through as a, a kid or adult, maybe rape, sexually abuse, that type of aspect as well. We are going to be talking about tonight, of course, we're going to talk about getting your man or woman back. If you feel like they they distance themselves, they don't love you, they could care less about you, they don't desire you, want to make love with you, you know what, we're going to talk about how in the hell are you going to get them back, plus... <clears throat> If time permits, which I'm hoping it will, we are going to talk about non-traditional relationships. We're talking about people that are in, they're swingers. They might be in open relationships, meaning they have a policy they can go out and have sex with whoever they want as long as their heart and soul remain in the home, right? The physical pleasure is out and about. Whatever. And we talk about, you know, maybe bisexual couples, maybe poly triads. We're going to flip it up a little bit. How many people think these relationships are whacked, crazy, something's messed up with them? I'm going to flip the script a little bit because, like I said, I'm very, I'm monogamous. I want one-on-one relationship. That's me. That's what I'm about. Um, I don't see me ever changing from that. That's just me. But. That doesn't mean we can't respect those that are different from us. We don't have to agree with it, of course, right? But, you know, we sort of respect it. It's like, you know what? If there's no harm being done to anybody or themselves, right, who are we to judge what is right and who is wrong, right? As long as you're not, 
you know, disrespecting each other. You're not hurting each other physically, emotionally, and you're not hurting yourself that way as well. And, of course, we all know, you know, when kids come into play, we don't mess with them, okay, big time. There's no, uh, there's got to be boundaries in place. And many of those non-traditional relationships, <clears throat> you know, there are boundaries in place. And usually when there's an issue in my office, it's usually when those boundaries are crossed uh, or maybe they're maybe not cemented, if you will. They're not clear boundaries set by either partner or maybe both partners. I thought this and I did this. I thought that and you did this. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, whatever. How many people out there are in the mix of, you know what, I might want to divorce, I might want to break up because my partners treat me like crap, right? They ignore me. They want to go out with their friends more than spend time with me. They want to um, and this goes for either gender. I'm talking about this ain't just for men. It's for women, too. And both genders do this very thing, okay? Um, so when you're not feeling love, you're not feeling appreciated. You don't feel like a priority or, hell, your partner doesn't even want to make love with you anymore. I'm going to try to give you a little bit of pointers to kick that up a little bit and what you can do, right, to try to bring them back, to try to, you know, pull them back to you without begging, without pleading, right? Because a lot of times when we feel um, we feel lost, we feel hurt, we feel not loved, right? Desire with our, we come out and we, it comes out in anger a lot, right? And this goes for both genders. It's not just women getting angry. Men start bashing, start belittling, start picking apart, where underneath all that, they're not feeling loved, they're not feeling desired, not feeling respected. Now, how many people try so hard, right, because of that anger, and they beg their partner, please love me, please love me, please make love with me. Yeah, I'm being sarcastic, because that comes across as a little sad, maybe a little pathetic, but I get it. I'm talking to the other partner. It might come across as pathetic, right? I'm not saying it is, but you look at that. They're losing respect for you because you're begging, you're pleading for them. I want you to stand your ground and be able to say, you know what, speak from the heart, not that anger, and be able to look at, you know what, I don't feel loved. I don't feel desired and it hurts. I want to feel loved by you. What can I do, you know, to pull you back to make you feel that way? And, you know, I described to a lot of clients, a lot of couples, whatever, it gets in a situation where a lot of, um, it's almost like a dog chasing its tail type of aspect. To where, you know what, one's yelling, screaming, the other one backs away. So the other one feels even more that the other one doesn't love them, scream, you know, love them, desire them, doesn't want to be with them. So they bark more, they yell more, they get more angry, more bitter. The other one wants to get away more. And they don't understand that pattern that needs to be broken. You know, maybe if the one softens the approach a little bit and the other one that usually runs and wants to get away stands their ground and you're able to talk and look at the hurt and what the hell is going on instead of feeling like you're being attacked all the time or you're being ignored and not cared about all the time, okay? So there, there's a little things. And you walk back in beginning of relationships, what are some things that you used to do to make one another feel loved, desired, right? Did you initiate sex years ago? Did you, you know, write love letters? Did you... um kiss a lot? Did you hold hands? Did you touch one another a lot? Shit, did you express that you miss each other a lot? Did you text, if they had phones back then, um, text or call each other, I miss you, I can't wait to see you? All these aspects, all of a sudden they go bye-bye, right? They disappear once you live together or married, and you start taking each other for granted. They'll always be there they're always, you know, going to be home. I come home to you, whatever. They're always going to be there. I don't want you to take each other for granted. A lot of times it happens. It's not intentional, not at all. It's just one of those things that happen. And I want you to pay attention, you know what, to get your man or your woman back, to get them more connected with them is, one, to stand your ground, not beg, and not plead them to be with you, Okay. You're going to lose respect for yourself, and your partner's going to lose respect for you, too. You can say, you know what? I love you, and speak from the heart. I love you. I adore you. I want you, and I want to feel loved by you. However, if not, you know what? 
Maybe we need to talk about separation, a divorce in that aspect. I'm not, you know, I don't promote divorce or separation or breakups, not at all, unless it's, a, you know, a very toxic situation. But it's your way of taking a stand and saying, you know what, I'm worth it. I am worth being loved. I am worth, you know, being desired and cared for. And being a priority in somebody's life, okay? Yeah, we work and all this stuff. There's got to be a balance, of course. But I want you to be build the confidence enough to say, you know what? I am worthy of being loved, of being desired. I want it from you. However, if you're unable or unwilling or maybe just don't feel it, you know what? Maybe we need to part ways. Again, you know, I'm coming across as very maybe nonchalant, very blunt. It hurts. I'm not saying, you know, when we love somebody and they don't love us back, it hurts like a you-know-what mofo. <laughs> so, you know what, you can hold your ground, speak from the heart, you don't beg, you don't plead, and it's so hard when people lose emotions big time and you get to the attitude where, you know what, Ugh. you know, you beg, you want them to love you so much you try to force it, and when you force things, what happens? It breaks, right? It usually doesn't work out. Why would you want to force somebody to be with you? Why would you want to force somebody to have sex with you? Why would you want to force somebody to love you and be with you, right? You don't want to do that. I want you to take a stand for yourself, get the confidence up, the self-worth up, your self-esteem up, and say, you know what? I deserve to be loved. Not being arrogant, but also you know, being humble, but being confident about, you know what? I'm not playing games, you know what, what can I do to show you, maybe I quit nagging, quit bitching, quit complaining a little bit more, and maybe you won't want to run away from me, maybe, you know, all these aspects, you need to check yourself and what you're doing to cause that partner not to love you, or maybe make you feel like you're not loved or desired, right, and we can get into, you know, medical issues, diabetes, blood pressure medications that can kill desire, you know, I get all uh, that aspect too. That's something to look at. But throw out the medical complications. Just say it's an emotional disconnect that's going on, right? So, number one, again, going back, you don't beg, you don't plead anybody to be with you, okay? Not at all. It's difficult. We're human. It's difficult for me, you know, when I've been there years ago. It, it's not easy. I get that. But I want you to have the, the courage and the, you know, sort of the self-fortitude, if you will, to be able to step up and say, you know what, again, I love myself. I know I'm a good person. I want to be loved. I want to be desired. And I want to be able to love somebody, too, like they want to be loved. I want to have somebody appreciate my love for them, my desire for them, big time. And why am I selling myself out if that person doesn't want to return those favors, okay? Again, it's not always easy. So going back, we're going to back up, you know, going back a little bit. Hey, Chris is in the house. Debbie's in the house. Wayne's in the house. Everybody, very cool. Spread the news. The art of relationship is live. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, lost my voice. Um, we're live, so spread the news, share the video. That'd be cool. I appreciate it. And you know, going at actually, someone just mentioned uh, below in the discussion. You can join the discussion below, please. And I won't mention your name without you know you giving me permission. So people like Chris, Debbie, you know, gave me permission to use their name. So that's why I threw it out there a while ago. And I won't mention your name unless you give me permission. But one, one individual mentions, just had this conversation. The month of May was off for me. It's his busy season, and we've both, you know, not been feeling good. He realizes we need more alone time. No sports and our kids, just us. You know what, that, that is very crucial. And you go back, you know, when we live together, and step families is a totally different dynamic. There's a lot more into it. You might have to deal, you know, you got his kids, her kids, her ex, your ex maybe in the picture. You got a lot more of a mess. Maybe. <laughs> Not always. But, you know, if you live together, you're dating, you have a kid, live together, get married, 
you know, you look at life gets in the way, you're working, right? You have kids, you're busy, all this stuff. And then, you, like I said, you start taking things for granted, like the individual mentioned below. You need to get back to doing what you did at the beginning of your relationship. It's different. We evolve. We grow. But how did you make that person feel important? How did you make that person feel loved, desired, cared for, that they were a priority, right? Did you used to maybe take them lunches up to work or, you know, she's working nights and you took, you know, dinner up to her lunch at her workplace or whatever? Uh, did you go out of your way to meet each other when you were dead tired? Now, what happened? How come you're not doing that anymore? Did you used to send texts all the time, you know, I love you, I miss you, and all of a sudden that goes by because you take each other for granted. Again, I'm going to go back and say it's not intentional. It's one of those things that happens, and you need to stop it. You need to back up and look at, you know what, what are we doing? What am I not doing to show my partner I love you? So this is one way of getting your man back, getting your woman back. But sometimes, you know, if it goes on for a long time, what's going to happen is that person that you're trying to get back to maybe get fall back in love with you or not want to leave or maybe show you they love you, what's going to happen is they're going to think, that one thing, it's an act, okay? That you're not being real, you're not being genuine because you are going back maybe writing love letters, you're texting more. They're going to think, you know what, I'm doing, uh, they're doing this because they don't want to lose. They're doing it because they feel they have to, not that they want to. Big difference, right? And you, me, I don't know anybody that wants to hear this stuff because the other person feels they have to. We want to feel it from that person that is genuine, right? So, What's going to happen is you're trying to get that man, your man, your woman back, and you're starting to do these things, right? Starting to show that they, you love them, they desire them. Maybe buying flowers, writing love letters again, little sticky notes where you're beautiful, I love you. They're going to think you're just doing this and it's not going to last, right? Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to get frustrated. Here, I'm showing you I love you. I do this and da 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 They're not really testing you. They're not believing it's legit. Why should they? Because you haven't done this for a long time, right? So they're thinking one thing. You're doing it because you feel like you have to, that you're not sincere about it, okay? And number two, even if it is genuine for a little bit, they're thinking it's not going to last. You know, it's going to last maybe a few days. It's going to last a week. It's going to last maybe a month, and then it's going to go back. So they don't want to desire it again. So you're going to get distance. You're going to get, you know, maybe distance. I'm pushing you away in that resistance. Again, I want you to hold your ground and understand this is what happens, right? You have to build that trust again, right? It's like if, you know, you get cheated on, are you automatically going to trust that person when they say, oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're going to freaking doubt them and doubt them and doubt them, right? It's the same thing when you're trying to win that man or that woman back. You got to bust your ass to make it work and you have to be consistent people okay um, you need to be consistent because they're worried about and they're gonna test you and I don't even think they are going to look at it as intentionally testing you they're gonna put up a front they're gonna put up a wall saying you know what I don't believe this is real this is legit and they're they don't want to get hurt right they don't want to allow themselves to get sucked back in to oh I've always wanted this it's back it's back and all of a sudden it's gone again they're, they're not playing the fool. They want to trust you that it's not going to just disappear again, right? They're going to want to know. They want not only want to know up here, they want to know in here that it's legit and that it's real. And you get, you know what, I get this. I need to prove this, and I'm going to prove that it is real, that it is genuine, that I love you, and I want you, and I desire you, and I'm sorry I neglected you, and I'm sorry that you weren't a priority, um... Or I made you feel like you're a priority, okay? So we need to back, you know, back this up and go back to doing the things we used to do to make each other feel loved, okay? Um, oh, we got it. Hey, Lisa's in the house. Trevor's in the house. Here we go, people. Um, <laughs> so much Chris just mentioned, don't tell Hillary where I am. <laughs> I don't even know where you're at. So, um... You know, these are elements where we look at, and Lisa mentioned love notes rolled up in your wedding ring, which is really, you know, which is really cool, 
you know, you start doing these things to show that you love each other again. You need to, you know, do a gut check. You know what? Maybe I wasn't showing you you're a priority. That wasn't my intention. I wasn't showing you I love you, I desire. Maybe I'm always tired, but then, you know, I perk up when friends call, when family calls, and they want me to do this, they want me to do that. But then you're too tired, right, to show me you love me, whatever. And now, you know, I'm at the point where maybe I don't even care anymore, and I'm not ready to peace out, and then that person wakes up. That person sort of hits rock bottom. It takes that to wake their ass up, and I'm sad. You know, it does sometimes. Sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, it's too late where that person, it's too late, I'm done. I'm not even going to give you a chance to show you or, you know, have you show me that you love me, that you desire me, that you care for me. Not at all. So this is where I want you, again, be persistent, right? Don't beg, don't plead, but show them and tell them. You know what? I know this. I want this to be consistent. I want this to be real, to be genuine, and it is. And I'm going to prove to you it is, okay? Now, if you get that resistance, this is where you got to sort of suck it up a little bit and realize they're resisting that because they don't want to get hurt again. They don't want to get their hopes up and have it crushed. We've all been there, right? It could be a career. It could be a job. It could be maybe we wanted to be a professional athlete, musician, whatever, you know, and we get crushed, right? They don't want to get crushed. So you need to be a little more understanding, a little bit compassionate and empathetic when you go to get frustrated. I did this today and you didn't even give me any feedback. You didn't even freaking uh, reciprocate your love. You didn't even whatever. You need to understand maybe it was you that caused them to be so distanced, to block off, to put that wall up, to maybe stop caring and desiring. Now you got to earn it back and you got to bust your ass in doing it. Again, it's got to be genuine. So this is not all about you. You need to think what they're feeling. What, what was it feeling? You know, what were they feeling like that they weren't loved, that they didn't get freaking, you know, that they got rejected all the time or they didn't feel desired. You know, what the hell, you know, what do you think it would feel like, okay? Nice tan. What tan? I got a tan? <laughs> Lisa's, <laughs> Lisa's mentioned I, I got a tan. woo -hoo! What tan? Um, <clears throat> thanks, Lisa, in the house. So, you know, if you have ideas that you are trying to do, that you're trying to kick up, the relationship and you're trying to kick up your marriage and you're trying to win your woman back, you're trying to win your man back, what are some things, and a lot of people feel pity, right? A lot of people feel sorry for themselves and they like, oh, poor me, they poor me, poor, poor the victim role, but then they need to look at, you know what, what the hell am I doing? Why is this going on? So these are tips to start winning your man back, start winning your lady back. Again, you're not begging. You're not pleading with them to take you back, okay? Because that tends to be, do I want to say wussified? That tends to mean like you're selling yourself out. And you don't beg or plead anybody to be with you. You can say it. And, you know, I want to be with you. I love you. And, you know, heartfelt and tears in your eyes. You're not begging them. You're telling them how you want to be loved. There's a difference, okay? And how you deserve to be loved and how you want to be loved. You don't want to get in that situation of begging and pleading with them because they're going to lose interest in you. They're going to think, you know, they're, they're going to think that, you know what? They're going to lose respect in you because, you know, begging and pleading, it's almost the same situation where how many people beg and plead to go out with you. Oh, please, 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 please go out with me. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. And it's like pfft, that attraction goes down the toilet. It's the same situation in this, okay? So we are talking about how to win your man, your woman back. And we, we I am going to take a break. Do not go anywhere, people. This is live. We're going to be back. I'm going to take a little break. And this is the Art of Relationships radio show. Thanks for listening. Don't go anywhere, people. Food stall, this isn't any way to live. No, not at all. And every one of these kids is so original. Hey! 
Live. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Greg Dzinski. This is the Art of Relationships radio show, and we're back live, people. And we talked about, you know, different ways to win your partner back and different ways to, you know what? What do I want to say? You know, different, that's it. Different ways to when you thought you lost your man, your lady, they don't love you, they don't desire you anymore, you know what, some tips to go ahead and do that, right? Don't beg, don't plead, speak from your heart, right? And stand up for yourself that you deserve to be loved and look at, again, you start doing the things you did before that they felt loved. And if you forgot, if you don't remember, you might need to ask them, okay? And they're going to get resentful. They're going to get pissed. They're going to get angry. Why do you care now? You haven't even done that. You're not going to listen to me. You know what? That's where I want you to sort of get rid of the frustration, get rid of the anger and the defensiveness, and say, you know what? I care. I know I screwed up. I messed up. I want to fix it. And I'm going to prove to you that I'm going to show you, right? You can still do it. It might be too late. They might be already gone whatever but at least you're gonna make the effort because you don't want any regrets right at least I tried I screwed up I learned and we go from there okay but at least you don't want to live with regrets and it has nothing to do with selling yourself out and being you know pathetic or being a wuss or being a butt kisser nothing to do with that it means you love them you realize you screwed up and you start doing the things you did in the beginning of the relationship or marriage, you show them they were a priority, that you love them, you desire them. You're going to get resistance. Remember that, okay? But you need to fight through that and understand that, but keep pursuing and keep being disciplined and showing them, right? You need to start doing that, okay? So, um, we are going to go into, <clears throat> ooh, maybe everybody's favorite, maybe not, right? We're going to go in a situation about non-traditional relationships, okay? How many people think, and I, I said this at, you know, the beginning of the show, I am monogamous. I'm, I'm very monogamous. That's what I want for me, my life. 
uh, my love life, one-on-one -on -one relationship, okay? Uh, love of a lifetime, but that's not for everybody, right? And how many people think you go out there, and I work with swingers, I work with bisexual couples, I work with those that are in open relationships, right? They can, it's just sexual pleasure with anybody else, but their heart and soul is maintained at home. That it's not emotional connection, it's just physical pleasure, and they're okay with that. Um, and you, you know, lesbian, gay clients too, and you in poly, you know, poly triads, polyamorous uh, clients, and how many, these non-traditional relationships, how many people you think, you know, you're out there, oh my, it might not be for you, but how many people out there think that it is, it's whack, you're crazy, you're deranged, you're evil, whatever it is out there, okay, that you think these non-traditional forms of a relationship are wrong, that they're whacked, whatever, or there's no way they'll work out, there's no way they would ever be happy, whatever, right? And I'm going to tell you, there are many relationships in these non-traditional formats that they're happy, right? They're happy. They know they love each other. They show each other they love each other. And sex might be just a physical pleasure um, outside of the relationship, you know, be it going to swingers party, going to, you know, whatever it is, that they have a poly, they're polyamorous, they're, um, and they're okay with that. The problem is, is when boundaries are getting crossed that they agree on in the relationship or marriage, right? That's what stuff happens. But I'm telling you, uh, you know, a lot of people think that you, you have to be happy, you know, in, or I'm sorry, in order to be happy, you need to be in a monogamous relationship, one-on-one, -on -one, male, female, or whatever. There's some people out there that still believe in that. Hell no. You can be, you know, doesn't matter if you're gay, lesbian, whatever, you can still be happy in a relationship, monogamous, right? And there's some people out there that think, oh, there's no way to be monogamous. There's no way you can be happy with one person forever and ever and ever. I disagree with that. I think that. But I also disagree with those that say, you know what, non-traditional relationships, they're asking for problems. They're asking for trouble. They're fine. As long as the situation is, you know what, when they set boundaries for themselves, when they're able to maintain those boundaries, they can be happy, right? It's like, you know, they might be more adventurous. They might be more, you know, wanting to be pleased sexually, and they're more maybe confident, more um, experimental sexually than maybe some other people. Again, it's not for me to judge or you to judge, right? But I'm here to try to educate you that I, I don't want you to judge these people that they're bad people. No, they're not that. It's not that they're bad people, right? Not at all. It's just that maybe they love each other differently than the traditional norm, right? The traditional, uh, what do you want to say, religious or the, you know, whatever norm you want to throw out there, society's norm, whatever that means. And there's a lot of people that goes, um, that goes in the situation to where you look at, you know, some people go ahead that, you know, I'm trying to avoid a message right now. I'll get back to it in a bit. I'm, I'm going back to a situation to where, um, you know, and there's some traditional families that they know the husband has a mistress. They know the husband cheats or whatever and they're okay with that right some people are okay with that again who if they're okay with that who are we to judge right because it doesn't work in our life or for me for you whatever why are we judging i think the more we judge about people you know what we need to look at ourselves are we perfect are we whatever we need to knock that off is it going to ruin society not necessarily no Right? Can they still, you know, everyone, well, how, what about their kids? What are, you know, a lot of those situations, they'll leave the kids out of it. You know, their sex life or whatever, and uh, swingers or um, even polyamorous, those type of aspects, you know, they'll open, they leave the kids out of it. It's none of the kids' business, that type of situation. We look at um, another individual, welcome to the show, really, really hit home when he was talking about showing 
attention. And then, you know, going back, we talked about this at the beginning, but I'm going to back up a little bit since this was that. Showing attention is huge. You know, sometimes we get so, you know, bogged down, like I said at the beginning, is um, we lack attention. We get tired. We get, you know, whipped. We get exhausted. We have kids and we spread ourselves too thin that we don't have enough to give it to our significant other. So they don't feel loved. They don't feel you know, appreciated, they feel lonely in the marriage or relationship, and you wonder why they go out and talk to somebody else. I'm not saying they should. It's just one of the things that happen, okay? Um, now, I want to hear comments. I'd love people, somebody to give me a call at 313-614-9498 and be able to talk to me about, you know, what the heck it goes on in non-traditional relationships. we got another comment in the house that mentioned about you know what it doesn't matter as long as there is love and trust and it's huge with you know non-traditional relationships and it cracks me up because people that look at them you know what how can there be trust when they're swingers it, it, they trust each other maintain it's not by your rules right it's by their rules their boundaries they set their own okay when there's love and trust and they know they're not going to step outside those boundaries right why is it anyone else's business, right? Why is it anyone else's business? That's We tend to gossip. We tend to talk about everybody else, right? How many people out there? How many people know friends, crap, family members? Maybe your spouse, your partner gossips. They talk about everybody else, but they're not looking at themselves. You know what? They don't look at what they do, what they don't do. Right? They're always about bashing somebody else that is different than them. Right? Say they're in an open relationship or they're swingers, whatever. It might not be for you. And you can set boundaries. You know what? It ain't for me, but you know what? You're good people. So what? You know, be it that's your decision that doesn't make you bad people. And there's got to be an understanding about looking at what is not, you know, right for you, but it doesn't make those people evil or bad. Okay? Again, for me, I um putting it out there, right? I'm monogamous. I'm I'm one on one, that's what I want. Love of my life, you know what I, I want I don't want to share myself with anybody else. I wouldn't want her to share herself with anybody else either. However, you know what? We need to cut some slack on judging everybody else. And a lot of people goes, they're gonna bash me, they're gonna look at me, which is cool, which is fine, I can handle it. You know what? I'm an adult. That, you know what, oh, Greg, you're okay with this, whatever. Next thing you're going to be, they throw that you're up there with, uh, okay with pedophiles. No, not at all. You know what, when people go to extremes, when they look at, you know, being okay with one thing, that doesn't mean it's for you for another thing. And who are you to judge, you know, somebody else because of their sexual orientation or, or what they do in their own home as long as nobody's getting hurt? No, now... If one person in a non-traditional relationship, you know what, wants to get out of that and go into a monogamous traditional relationship, whatever the hell that means, or marriage, you know what, then they have to look at as a couple, what are we going to do, you know what? If one wants to and the other one wants to continue it, and it's not always the man that does, what are we going to do to maintain that situation? What are we going to do to maybe get away from that? And what is more important? Is our marriage more important or relationship more important? Because if I stay in there, that person might not want that anymore. I could lose that person. Now we have to do a gut check and what's, you know, most important to them, to, you know, to them, to you, whatever. Again, it's not a judgment call that should be made by us. It's looking at, you know, what, what is best interest of them and everything else. Um, now, uh, another individual mentioned, okay, but there was more involved other than attention. I get that. And that's where we need to look at, you know, midlife crisis. Everybody throws that out there. You know what? That might be another, actually, that could be a cool topic, uh, another topic for maybe next week or whatever. We can talk about midlife crisis. Do they exist? Are they real? Everybody associates them with men, but can women have a midlife crisis? Hell to the Yes. Um, you know, what do you, what is the difference between a midlife crisis and realizing that you're not just at, you're done. You're not happy in the marriage. You're not done in the relationship. And everybody assumes, right? Oh, going through a midlife crisis. 
excuse me. And a lot of people hit on, they, you know, oh, they're in a midlife crisis. That's why they're doing that. That's why they're doing this. What if they're just not happy? So we'll get on the topic about, um, you know what, what is the difference between a midlife crisis versus, shit, they just don't love you and they don't want to be with you anymore. Or maybe that's your situation. Because of a certain age or whatever, they assume it's a midlife crisis, and that's not always that's not the case a lot of times, okay? So we'll, maybe we'll get into that next week. Um, I'd love to hear or love to see any more comments, any questions. Please ask them in a discussion. You can also give me a call, again, 313-614-9498. You know, lessons of tonight, again, don't judge others, okay? Because it doesn't work for you. You know what? Doesn't mean it doesn't work for somebody else. You know what? So many people are, you know, trying to stand on the pulpit, you know, trying to preach to everybody else how they should live their life. Sometimes they need to mind their own business. Yeah, I did say that. And realize people can be happy that are not living the way that you think they should, right? So you need to, maybe if more people minded their own business, Maybe it would be a better world. It'd be a better, maybe more caring, more emotionally safe environment and world for everybody else. Now, I'm all about, you know, if kids are getting harmed, you know, domestic violence, that's different. I'm not, you know, that's a different ball game. That, again, like I said, the non-traditional relationships, it's when, you know, nobody's getting hurt. Everybody is consenting to it. Do you understand? Domestic violence, that's a different situation. Pedophilia, you know, that's the child can't consent to that, okay? So you're looking at, you know, you're going to get the zealots, the extremists out there, you know, oh, Greg, next thing you know, you should be okay with this. You know what? I'm going to stop those individuals right now and sort of maybe put you in your place a little bit and say, you know what? That's not the case. There are boundaries. And when they're consenting adults, it needs to be between consenting adults not those other individuals, and they can be happy. And I've worked with many couples over the years that, um, you know, they've ended up being happy and loved together and living in non-traditional relationships, okay? And it, it's a evolution thing. It's, you know, if it doesn't work, maybe it's working, they love it now, doesn't mean it's going to be that way forever, but that's up to them to decide, not for me and not for you, okay? Remember, um... Also, going back to winning your partner back, you know, winning your lady back, winning your man back. Start doing the things you used to do. Love notes, uh, affirmations, compliments, paying attention to them. How many people actually pay attention to their partner and what they do for work? You know, we had uh, a couple, I had a couple in here today, um, earlier today, and talking about that her husband didn't even know it was sad. Didn't even know really what floor she worked on in a building or whatever. Um, that we get so self-absorbed in our own life, our own work life, our careers, whatever. That we're not paying attention to our own partner and what they do. We take it for granted like it's no big deal. These are other ways that we can show them that they matter. Hey, how'd your day go? What you know? What floor are you working on? Who do you work with? Not you know it's. You know, who don't you like working with? Who do you like working with? You know, team dynamic, whatever that situation is, okay? You need to get back and show them attention. You're not doing it because it's a control freak thing. You're doing it because you care. You're asking questions. You're being inquisitive, okay? So start doing those things again. Ask questions. Be inquisitive about what's going on in their life. Start paying attention. Start taking a time. You know what? I'd like to take you out. I'd like to go for a walk. I'd like to whatever. Start paying attention to your partner that you feel that you're losing, right? Man or woman, doesn't matter, right? Start showing attention. And you know what? I get you're afraid to take a risk, right? You're afraid to take a risk because you're going to get rejected. You're going to get maybe shut down. And like I said, you need to fight through the frustration and the anger and the rejection because chances are, if you have not shown your partner much attention, that you love them, that you desire them, chances are they're not going to believe it's you're being legit. 
when they say, I'm done, I don't, I can't do this anymore. When you're trying to win them back, right, you need to persevere. You need to be dedicated and show them, okay? And again, if they still don't want that, and I'm not talking over a day, a week, well, I've been doing this for two days and I'm not getting anything. You need to understand it's going to take longer than that, people, okay? And that's what I mean about, you know, use perseverance and be dedicated and disciplined. And if it goes on for a while and it's still, you know, months or whatever, and there's, you know what, I want out, I'm, you can look back and you can reflect and be proud of the effort you did make. Maybe it was too late, but you're learning from that and not bashing yourself. And now you're going to pay attention maybe in your next relationship to pay more attention, not take that person for granted, and not sort of play the victim role. And I'm not going to get hurt again, so I'm not putting myself out there. I'm only going to go into the next relationship or marriage half ass, and I'm not going to give myself off. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you have that attitude and you go into it half ass again and not giving your all, Guess what? Chances are you're going to be in the same situation that you were in before. So keep doing the things to show your partner you love them, desire them, that you cherish them, okay? Maybe you brought home their favorite candy, you know, once in a while. Maybe you brought home their favorite flower. You you stop. Maybe, you know, the man in your life likes a uh, favorite beer or favorite whatever it is, you know, maybe they like candy too or favorite ice cream and you made the effort to stop. You sort of go out of your way once in a while like you did before. Yes, you need to feel appreciated. You know, thank you. Oh, that's so cool you thought of me. That's awesome, right? You need to start doing those things again, people. And chances are, you know what, that you can win your man or your lady back to you again. And you got to remember, once you do have them back, you better not stop doing what you're doing to lose them in the first place, right? Then they're going to tr not trust you and look at, it ain't legit, it's going right back to the way it was before, peace out, I'm done. You need to be consistent, people, okay? Peace and love to everybody out there. Another heads up, theartofrelationships.org, my website, also, my book is available, my newest book, uh, The Relationship Guide, Tools to Ignite Love and Intimacy. That's available on Amazon. You can also see the link on my website, too. And I'm finishing up. I'm just about ready to offer. I'm going to have uh, webinars, seminars available. I have eight of them, I think, ready now. Anything from, you know, healing you know, working with or healing from an affair situation to self-esteem issues to maybe you feel because you were tra traumatized or working through trauma and it still haunts you, whatever. That's going to be another one. Um, and another, you know, I am worth it. There's eight of them. You can check on my website again, theartofrelationships.org. On the far right um, link, if you will, underneath online you know, programs or counseling that you'll be able to see all the programs on there as well. And I'll, I'll get those out there more, advertise those, uh, and push those out there more for people's awareness, okay? My passion, of course, is trying to help you have a dynamic love life, okay? Not only dynamic, you know, relationship or marriage, dynamic, you know, electrifying sex life as well, but also that you feel more confident, more relaxed, you know what, and that you love yourself even more. Peace and love, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.